So this is an area that's well worth investigating and going back and forth. Many a prospector has used this technique and gone into areas and within an hour of walking into a, a, that sort of zone has found their first nugget. Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. One of the common things I get asked when uh, meeting a fellow prospectors out in the field is do I recommend the use of the Trilobite app or the Australian Geology Travel Maps which is its proper name. My answer is a resounding yes. Get the app. It's well worth the money no matter where you are in it in Australia. Use it if you go gold prospecting, especially if you're here in Western Australia. The app is called Australian Geology Travel Maps. It's generally called the Trilobite app. It's not called Trilobite. It's named after the creature that lived about 300 million years ago, basically extinct now. It lived at the bottom of the sea, a type of sea loss, and uh, it grew to around about 50 to 100 mils in length. Sometimes it's much bigger ones around. So let's jump into the app. The app is available on Google Play. It's also available on Play and Apple R Store. On this screen here, you can see I've actually got it. This is what it looks like on Google Play. And this is what it looks like on the App Store. So pretty much Australian Geology Travel Maps. Uh, just search for Australian Geology Travel Maps and easy one to install. So well worth it. I think it costs me around about the $11 a year, it's a dollar a month. Sounds like a good deal to me. So, yep, it's a paid app. We'll run on only on iOS and Android. And so there's no Windows versions or anything else like that. On the screen here, we can see that there is, um, just moving my mouse into position, you can see there's a, in the center of the screen, there's the Australian Geology Travel Maps, Trilobite, um, um, icon. I double click on that, starts the app. So one of the nice things about this app is that you can download geology, um, tenements, drilling, gold exploration locations, put in your own secret spots, travel destinations, all sorts of things into it before you leave home or before you lose your phone and internet connection. And then when you're around in the bush, you can pull out the phone and when you've got zero internet connection, zero phone, just it is totally disconnected, this app will still work. You can still zoom in and see satellite imagery. You can still zoom in and see the um, tenement information. You can still look for um, gold locations in and around the, the area of interest. So this is the map starting up. It starts up, in my case, on the Android, it starts with a classic Google Maps scene. I'm in Perth, so you can see the, the blue dot drawn in Perth. If I zoom right down, I'll actually show the location of my house. You zoom in and zoom out by either using the plus and the minuses down the bottom or using the um, geolocation button over there. But because it's a mobile device, you can just use this classic pinch and zoom like you normally do on any other sort of mobile uh, mapping application, and it works just fine. So a quick tour of the interface. Down in the bottom left hand corner, you've got an overlay button, which means you can turn additional information on top of whatever is underneath. So you can think of sheets of plastic laying on top of each other, each with different bits of information and you can see through. We'll be showing that in use in a minute. Uh, place to allow you to drop a marker or a pin on the map with some attributes. Enable audio um, instructions and also this one turns on a trail as you go. Really handy, I find this really handy, is if you're going into a place where you've never been before, maybe at night or something like that, just before I leave the main road, tap the button, drive my way in, get lost half a dozen times, and then trying to find my way back out again can be like through a maze of old roads and drill tracks. At least this was left at mark on the map and I can find which way to get back to where I started from. You can also export those out and share them with other people if you need to. A search option with a little mark, mark, um, ha hand lens allows you to search for like long locations, place names or even leases. Now the base maps at the top, by toggling this option I can see different information. Standard I believe comes with just Google Maps, Google Terrain and Google Satellite. If I turn on for example Google Satellite I get the pretty much standard sort of um, uh, 
image and you can use the pinch and zoom to zoom in and see whatever you want. Now the nice thing about this application is now that I've turned this on and I've zoomed in a bit every time that I zoom to a particular location it's grabbing whatever it sees on the screen that it had to download from the internet in this case the Google satellite and stored it locally on my device which means that next time I go out in the bush and there's no internet connection I can zoom down to the same locations again really handy if you identified a couple of hot spots you want to visit maybe some old workings whatever you zoom down in the house at home you find out what you look for when you're back in the bush you can do the same thing and you still have the, the satellite imagery top corner is where you basically do the management of the data that you're getting so click on manage downloads it takes you to a page I believe on their website I'm not sure how this works but you can see all the different information you can get you got New Zealand New South Wales um, New South Wales subscriptions if you pay extra money for that one uh, Northern Territory data Queensland I think there's a Queensland subscription South Australia Tasmania and of course always WA is down the bottom and um, so we start off with this is the basic stuff you get WA simple geology detailed geology bedrock geology magnetics etc now on the on the um, right hand side of the screen you've got install or installed I for example haven't got simple geology installed but I do have the magnetics RTP which is reduced to pole we demonstrated that a bit it's a really handy data set to get hold of and you also got the first um, first vertical derivative magnetics if you scroll down it comes to the WA prospector subscription section now this is an additional payment per year I think it's about another 10 15 dollars per year so all up is about 25 bucks a year give or take a bit um, so you're talk, talking all of two dollars a month and this one gives you all the, the current tenements all I have to hit the button so when it says in blue it means I have already got the latest one and it's up to date if I haven't it will be in red and I can hit the update button so for example I've got the latest gold deposits which are updated yesterday and the same as the current tenements which are updated yesterday I haven't updated the um, the mineral exploration holes draw holes so there's but I, all I have to do is press update I won't do it now because it's a gigabyte download and it will take some time to get rid of something I can just click a button at the beginning and I will uninstall it so if you need to save space or having some issues you think you've only got half the data down and you've lost your internet connection or whatever go in there press the X on the little red garbage bin try it again clean up and okay. can um, and you can clean up some of the additional data sets that you have downloaded now I'll just go back to the app okay now so once we've downloaded the information we can see it as either base layers or as overlays now for example if I go in here and I turn on current tenements this is the tenement information that was downloaded yesterday so you can see there's a lot of WA is covered by tenements and I'm just zooming to a particular spot because it's colorful and for no other reason than that so in this screen here we can see there's green there's blue there's orange and there's red each one have different meanings and the only one basically you're allowed to go on to as a prospector um, that's just roaming around the countryside with a valid miners right is the blue okay green is live it basically means a lease has been pegged it's gone through the pending stage which was the blue and now is finally moved to the live situation the red and the orange are basically just no goes okay red is like either special areas or nature national parks some sort of uh, nature reserves or any of area of high value that the government does not want any mining or prospecting to take place in it the orange ground generally means aboriginal ground so stay out of it um, again it can also have a few other meanings but all you have to know is that stay out of the green stay out of the orange stay out of the red okay go on the blue or the place that has no 
tenements marked on it. Now, if you're looking at this map here, and this is zoom in on this bit of ground up here somewhere, you can see there's a fair bit of ground that doesn't have any tenements on it. Now, that may be tenements in there for a couple of good reasons. One, very unperspective ground. Maybe it's all granite country or something like that, or it's deep alluvials, which no one can get through. Or there could be some other reasons why people can't put tenements on that ground. Now, that may be some of the ground may be freehold. It may have some sort of other environmental restrictions or some other Aboriginal areas blocked out on it. The Trilobite app is not the source of truth of all accurate information. It's a, a representation of some of the data. It may not be up to date either. It's as updated as the developer can make it. But if you want the most up to date, most accurate, most comprehensive, then go to either TenGraph or GeoView and look at the lease information and boundaries. They can tell you what is happening in a bit of ground that Trilobite can't tell you. So always, always, always check with GeoView and TenGraph before committing to a bit of ground. There's also a bit of a delay in between the time that the Mines Department will move a lease from pending to live, and that can happen. That and then, and then when they load that to the website. That, and by the time that it gets to Trilobite or the Australian Geology Travel Maps, that can be a number of days. So I always go back to the authoritative source of truth and check with TenGraph and, um, and um, GeoView before you head out into the bush, heading out to some um, pending ground which you thought was available. Okay, now one of the nice things about, the thing I like about this application, and it has a little blue dot on the screen which shows your current location. So as you're walking around or as you're driving around, the dot is moving on the map to say where you are. Quite handy when you're on a lease and you want to know which direction you're going in or whatever else like that. Word of caution, okay, these lease boundaries, are vast majority of them are not surveyed and they've never had a GPS taken out to any of the boundaries. So they are approximations of their location. If you happen to be prospecting on someone else's lease uh, and you're not allowed to go there, then the full laws, force of the law can be brought against you. Saying that you thought Trollobite was giving you the right information is not a defense. It is up to you to make sure where the lease boundary is. So what I would suggest doing is if the lease you're on butts up or borders against a live lease, then leave your metal detector in the car and go for a walk with your Trilobite app and try and find the least corners that are near your areas. And from that, you can work out how accurate is that le lease drawn respect to Trilobite's information. You may find that it can be out by 50 meters, sometimes by even more. So it's your responsibility to find the lease boundary and to stay on the right side of the lease boundary. It's no defense to say, Trilobot said I was a case so I went. Not a good idea. Okay, so let's, how do we use this thing now? So now that we've got the various information on you, so what we can do is, I'm just gonna go into down here, and I can turn on one of the layers we've got here is the WA Gold Deposits. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit, you can see where they, now there's a lot of gold deposits in WA. These are just the known gold deposits. There is many, many more gold locations out there that are not shown on any map. But this gives you an idea of where things are trending, directions and possible locations. So you can grab any particular location and zoom down to it. And it's got this twist on the map where you can rotate. I have to say I do, don't actually like it, but uh, it's one of those things. I wish you could turn it off. If you do know it turned off, please leave a thing in the comment that would be great okay so now we're moving on from here what we're going to click on one of the locations and it will tell me what it is so that is the vb north wrl whatever the hell it means it's a gold infrastructure proposed let's try one of these ones down here it is the gold lc may south 
it's a closed gold mine. The circle at the top is a gold silver deposit undeveloped. Okay, so there's a number of gold locations around here. If we also toggle on the base layers and we put on the current tenements, we can see where the gold deposits are sitting. And you can see down the bottom here, as I'm zooming in on it, there's some pending ground with known gold deposits on it, just into in here. So that's a, an area worth looking at. Now this area where the green and the blue overlap, green always takes priority, so it still means it's a no-go area. Okay, even though the blue is overlapped with the green. So there's some areas inside there, might be worth a look inside there. So let's have a zoom out of it and have a look around. And this, oops, there's some at the bottom. Touch the screen accidentally. So there's, there's some areas in there and there's some areas over there. And it may not be as many as I thought, but definitely looks like some something happening in this region here. So this lease up here might be worth a visit. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually find out who owns the lease by clicking on it, or I can actually go to the marker down the bottom, marker location by either using the current location, which is quite handy, or on the map. So tap on the map, and I'll say here, and it, you can tap. Yes, okay, I know that. So I can type some information about it, and I can say, um, go here, or whatever else I want to say in the thing, okay? And now I have the red dot on the map, which means I've put a marker. So I can go through and load up as many different locations as I want. And at the end of the day, whenever I'm traveling around this area, I can find bits of information. If you've got access to additional information, like uh, a mate has got a whole bunch of um, GPS locations, or you bought something off a fellow prospector, or you've done research with some other um, mapping application, something like um, QGIS, for example, you can actually export the information as GeoJSON and actually bring that into the app. If you're interested in that sort of aspect of um, importing additional information, please leave a comment below. Let me know that you're keen on that idea and I'll make a follow-up video to that one. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Now we've got this information here. Now, what I can do here is I'll remove the tenements and I'll replace it with the magnetic RTP. Now this is the uh, aeromagnetics. This is a plane that's flew, flown back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We can see how much of the state it covers. It pretty much covers the whole state, the white lines, the coastline, and, you, and they've still got the gold deposits on top of it. So zooming down to my dot, Can. we can see there's the gold locations in the the red bits red and yellow bits are the high magnetic areas and the which is classified as the warm bits and the coal bits the blues and the light blues are the low magnetic bits so high magnetic rocks are those rocks with lots of iron in them like dolerites gabbros um, basalts, ultramafics, etc. Low iron rich rocks, granites, any of the granitoids, etc. sediments will show up as the coal colors. Now most of the gold in Western Australia is associated with iron rich rocks. As the, the fold comes up, intersects the rocks, it, the, the, the fluids that are coming up the fold start to react with the, the country rock, which is the rock at the side, and that in turn and depending on the chemistry of the country rock will encourage the gold to come out. So the more iron rich the, the, the country rock, the more it will precipitate out and you get gold forming. So using that information, we can see why there is gold along this edge here. There's probably some something hiding in there. So what you can do is there's this red bar and button along the bottom and you can move the line out the way. So there's something happening in here which is not obvious on the error mags. 
but something is popping out there. Now it could just be it's masked out. Um, it could be something, but something is running up through here, as you can see, that's not telling us everything via magnetic. So not one tool is going to be your uh, go to to go to tool every time. Sure, that was difficult to say. You can also see this is a, a sort of a thin, slightly magnetic band coming up through here. And as it arcs through here, you can see how it collects more and more gold deposits. You can also see some of the major liniments, potentially old faults, coming up through the structures. So there's one coming up through here. There's another one coming up through there. There's it looks like another one running down through here and another one down through here. Now, if you were to use a bit of creative thinking, you could maybe say there's a fault that comes through here and down here, and maybe this is why it cuts off the end of this gold mineralization. And the same sort of thing, let's see this thing goes here, bends direction, could be another fault, end of perspective ground. So using this information, you can help position yourself where you want to go to. Now, one of the things which is quite nice, and I'm going to turn off the uh, magnetics and turn on the drill holes across the state. Now you can see there is an awful lot of drilling exploration and I'll actually turn off this one so we don't see that. This is just the drilling holes across the state. There's, about, there's a good couple of million to choose from. Let's go back down to our little spot. Now this spot has no particular meaning except it was in the center of the map at the time that I looked at. So what you can see here, this is actually not a bad example, better than I thought it would be. When mining companies go into explore a region, they generally will do some exploration type drilling using air core, rab or um, auger. And usually these sort of things are mounted on the back of a Land Cruiser Ute. They set up some east-west lines across the countryside. The reason it's done east-west is because most of the mineralization runs in a northerly direction, be it either running northeast or northwest or north. But it's never going to run east-west or any other direction. So it's in those directions. So doing east-west makes it easy for people to do it. Plus it's easy to do layout. Um, with people to say go to this particular location and then drive to you east or due west. So what they do, because drilling is expensive, they will place traverse lines, which they call the east-west lines, at fairly large spacings, maybe hundreds of meters to a kilometer apart. But along each line will drill a point maybe say 50 meters apart and drill down to solid bedrock, take a sample close to that part of the thing, bag it up, send it off to the lab couple of a week two weeks month whatever it is depending on how much you've paid and relationship you've got with your assay lab the data comes back they've been plot the stuff up on the map and they start to look for what part of the, the holes what hole locations have got anomalous gold values in them once you've got that plot on the map they know where to go back to now if they do if they don't find any anomalous drilling anomalous gold values not drilling anomalous gold values and basically they'll leave that area and go on to the next bit so what you'll find is areas that have got wide space traverses with no infill drilling in it something like this part of the world here you see wide space traverse lines nothing in, in other words they found deadly there okay if they do hit some interesting values now, it doesn't have to be a screamer. It doesn't have to be like, you know, answers to the ton or anything like that. But they find it over a couple of holes, maybe in a couple of traverses. Then they will come back and do what's called infill drilling. Drill some more lines, east, west, but much tighter together. And you can see they've done it in some of these regions down here. And over here. And over here. Okay, so now they've done more drilling. So let's zoom into that particular location. So they've come in and put a travis line there, travis line there, travis line there, trying to figure out what they found. Now, if they found a continuation of the gold, 
or some actual good half decent values out of it and maybe over a decent length they'll come back and drill some more to actually define the extent of it and maybe if it's good enough they'll bring in the next phase of drilling which is usually RC drilling, reverse circulation drilling which is way more expensive and that will drill down into the solid rock trying to find out what they've actually intersected. Now in this case here they've obviously found something but it didn't get them too excited. Okay, Does that mean there's no gold there? No. That means there is gold there, but it didn't get them excited at the time. Now, if we go along, and I'll zoom right in here, and you can see that, apologies for this um, image here, but this is the way Trilobite displays it. It doesn't scale the icons. But if you click on one of these, it says this was a rab hold, drilled by Croesus Mining NL, and when did they drill it? We click on the information and it says that was drilled 1 Jan 2002, 1 December, sometime in 2002, so nearly 20 years ago. What was the price of gold 20 years ago? If I remember right, it was less than $1,000 an ounce, an ounce, so they needed some significant values to get it over the line. So let's go back to the map. And so they fooled in a a bit of information here but they didn't find anything to get too excited about but if we move across to this area over here for example they've done a lot more drilling in between here and then they've followed it up with this yellow drilling which is uh, typically it says, it says unknown so it's not recorded as what type of holes it was so something interesting happening in this zone you see the density of drilling that's happening here now that is a good indicator that gold was found there. Okay, it means that um, now if the, you turn on the, let's go back and turn on the Google satellite. Hmm, there's no open pit there. Okay, now next bit of caution: Google satellite imagery is not always updated. Okay, sometimes it can be more than a decade out of date. So check other sources of information but you know at this way it's hinting that there was this stage never went to a gold mine but if you look closely you can actually see the individual travis lines and the ground so we zoom in a bit more these white dots are the actual locations of the drill holes that they draw down into this so you can see that it was pretty well drawn out in cam so nothing was encountered in this one let's go back to the um, the drilling. Where was the drilling? There's drilling. Okay, so that to me is a likely location to go gold exploring. So what would have could have happened here is that they found some low grade gold over a probably looking. This is a 200 meter down here. So uh, from here to here is probably at least a kilometer, maybe a kilometer and a half of strike length. So this is a a sizable um, location and extent but they couldn't follow it up with high enough grades to get too excited about but that doesn't mean that as a amateur prospector uh, that there's no gold for us to go and visit what they could have hit is some a quartz vein that's come up they've intersected either down here or at the top of the quartz vein with their drilling and bits of this is broken off and floated to the surface. If it's only got a quartz vein of say two, three centimeters in, in thickness, maybe even, I don't know, up to half a meter, it wouldn't generate a huge gold anomaly, okay? But it could have nuggets in it that have made their way to the surface. So this is an area that's well worth investigating and going back and forth. Many a prospector has used this technique and gone into areas and within an hour of walking into a, a, that sort of zone has found their first nugget. Well worthwhile. All this information is telling us look here, look here, look here. Okay. So let's zoom out a bit more and you can see they've actually gone nuts down here with different types of drilling. Um, it's still unknown. What's the yellow one down the end? They followed up with RC drilling. Now let's turn on the geology again, uh, sorry the geology, the uh, Google satellite and you can see why they went nuts down here. 
there is an open pit there. Looks like a couple around the area. Now I think all this ground is actually taken. Um, it's all under lav, so yeah, looks, it's all green. But that demonstrates the point. So what you want to look for is you want to go out there, turn on the, in the base layers, for example, you can turn on current tenements, overlay it with the drilling, overlay it with the geology, and actually start looking around to say, where is there dense drilling? Where is there gold occurrences, either north, south, east, west, or somewhere along strike? And the ground is pending that I can go and visit. Using that information, then click on the little um, marker button, drop a pin on the map, give it a, some description of why you like it, mark a couple, and so, soon you'll start building up a database of tens if not hundreds, even thousands of possible locations that you can visit anywhere around the state. So whenever you're going out and think, oh, I feel like going out for a detect this weekend or the next week or so, where should I go? You've got an ongoing database to pull out. A great activity to do this time of the year. It's way, way too hot to go out into the bush. It's currently, Perth is currently like 43 degrees today. It's stinking hot. Perfect uh, activity to sit in the, in, the, um, in the nice cool office or in the uh, at home and the lounge looking at these information, dropping pins and collecting up a good database. So I hope this information has helped. If you do like what I've said, I'd love it if you give me a subscribe and especially a thumbs up because that would help a lot with the channel and I will hopefully see you on the next video. Thanks guys. Take care. Happy prospecting.